this is probably the coolest thing I've ever heard. He said, I only regret that I have but one life to give for my country. And um, that was when he was, like, his last words. Do you have any fire on words? He's like, yeah, I wish I could die twice for America. Like, how, how badass is that? Like, you have to be, like, he has some balls, man. Like, he did not care. But, but yeah, like, so he, you know, he's the perfect example of, of, of proving that the Americans were using spies. They were using counterintelligence to, or they were using ca- intelligence and counterintelligence to beat the British in any way possible. Um, so that's that's the second guy we're going to talk about. The third person we're going to talk about is uh, or a group of people is Benjamin Talmadge and the Culpeper or the Culper Ring. And this was actually set up by George Washington and Benjamin Talmadge, who were in contact. And that was the first really government run. I guess it it wasn't government yet, but it was the first executive run. Um, intelligence agency and le- led by the, our first president Most and so it, it was yeah. very effective and okay. so they let's see, which one, they the first guy operations they in which they hired right <laughs> I, don't know, I forgot the word hired but they hired a guy named um like William Brewster Caleb Brewster and he kind of was the middleman. So they had back to it. Alright, sorry for technical difficulties. We kind of um the computer shut off while we were filming. So the they originally they were kind of set up as a intelligence agency that uh was it was just a spy network that was it started with Washington or at the top of the chain was Washington and then it went to this guy Talmadge, and then it went to Caleb Brewster, and then the field operation person was uh, was Benjamin something. It was, his last name, or his cover name was Culper. So he went as Culper uh, because he didn't want his real name to be caught. He didn't want his family to be in danger. And if you know anything were to happen, then oh well, who's that guy? We only know him as whatever Culper. his real name was. And so... They gathered a bunch of information. There was actually a TV show about this. I don't know if you've seen it. Um, it's called Turn. I'm not sure what network it's on. But it was all about the Culper Ring. There was a bunch of books written about this. And this was really the first organized spy agency in America used to fight the British. Uh, so yeah, that was a big deal. Lots of spies in the American Revolution. Lots of covert stuff. Lots of, lots of pay. Oh, that's the other thing. George Washington paid all of his spies in straight cash. Like, he didn't... <laughs> <laughs> no, no credit tax. cards. No yeah, taxes. Was, no ta- he was, he, uh, there's a little money on the side. Like, don't tell anyone. Um, but yeah, definitely, that was kind of the start of doing bad things to do good things. <laughs> yeah. So that brings us to after 1800. This is everything kind of died down after this. this uh, American Revolution was over. There wasn't really any problems in the, until I guess the War of 1812. Um, but right before that, uh, James Monroe or James Madison, who was the president at the time, uh, funded or decided to fund a Secret Service kind of thing, which the Secret Service today is now known to, yeah. to like protect the president. <laughs> but at the time, the Secret Service was protecting president spies, um, stuff America should not be doing, but they needed to do it, and that's why they set up a. Secret Service and, and why it's like called today, Secret Service. Doing America's dirty work. Doing America's That's dirty work. That's the CIA Yeah. Um, so I mean, we don't know what goes on. Like, <laughs> maybe they're all. Maybe they just eat cupcakes all day. You know, we don't know. But probably not. They're probably killing people. But yeah, basically James Madison used his Secret Service, which actually the first person before we before we give all the credit to James, James Madison. Madison. The first person to say that we need a Secret Service was George Washington in his like inaugural speech in his during his presidency, but it wasn't really funded until James Madison. So James Madison used his Secret Service that he set up um, to try to get Spain out of Florida. They wanted Florida as a territory. Uh, they, during their like, we learned about this in class. They, they they got their you know they bought territory from Spain or they wanted or. The British beat Spain, got Florida, and... The no, but I'm pretty sure the British here. 
Spain and Florida. Did that happen? Yeah, right. They had Florida. They gave it to Spain so that yeah, America yeah. couldn't have it. But America ended up buying it from them anyways, or stealing it from them, according to James Madison. Um, so what happened yeah. was he uh, he used a fund. He employed agents, and he right. told them to get to influence Spain. Yeah, and uh, so that was really like kind of the first, like we said earlier, there was a first operational kind of organization, executive run levels of of uh, intelligence agency. But this was the first government paid for, government run, and government operated um, intelligence agency. Or not, I guess it wasn't even an agency yet. I don't even know if America. I don't even know if America had agencies, or even if they knew what an agency was. Actually, they probably knew what an agency was. But, anyways, um, that brings us to the War of eighteen twelve. This is kind of a dark age in intelligence. There, nothing really happens between the War of eighteen twelve and the Civil War. I guess there's still a Secret Service, but we, they weren't needed. America wasn't going to war. Um, but the main cause for the decline in intelligence and secret service agencies is the failure of the U.S. intelligence agent, secret service at the time to find out that the British were going to invade Washington during the War of 1812. That, you know, no one thought it was going to happen. They were like, nah, they're not going to invade our capital. That's crazy talk. Um, and then when the, the British were 16 miles out of Washington, that is not that far away. That's basically us biking to Tyson's Corner. It's It would take us, what, three hours? Three hours, maybe. Two hours, two and a half. Two and a half hours. It, it's not that far away. Um, and they t- the Secret Service like, oh, crap. They're, they're right outside Washington. Like, do something about it. You know, the three hours to, to evacuate a city. Good job, Secret Service. They sucked. They, they kind of screwed over. It, I mean... But it's not on them, they didn't think it was going to happen. But yeah, basically, they failed at their job, so they were fired. And they weren't really used until the Union and Confederacy. They were around. used a bit in the Civil War, but not not that much. So so they were really... I mean, they yeah. came back to real use. In, and during in, the yeah, Civil War. Yeah. yeah, I mean... 12... From the they were 1812 to 1850s is yeah. not that long to not have something... Uh, I mean, I don't even think they had a federal bank until, like, that time. So, I mean, I guess it was just a time of different focuses. They didn't need an intelligence agency. And so they didn't pay for one. And that's perfectly fine. And we won't... You know, this early intelligence is kind of a slippery slope. We don't know what what the, we were getting our, or they were getting themselves into. Uh, it was still kind of like, you know, touching the water. Is it warm or is it cold? They don't really know. Uh, anything about what they're doing. It was kind of like a developmental time. Um, but the bottom line is that when they needed it to work, it worked, and but sometimes it didn't, and that's why it, it was kind of like give or take. Maybe they got intelligence, maybe it helped them, maybe it didn't. But they, you know, there was a lot of stuff behind the scenes involved with American intelligence and British intelligence and French intelligence and all this other stuff that we don't learn about ever. And uh, they did a lot. They they did. They did a lot for America, and they did a lot for our freedom, and we don't give them any credit because what they were doing was illegal. And, and in the end, what they did was they prevented it, so we never could find out. Right. That. It's not like they like like put the bullet in the hand and say it. They, they looked for so many measures before to prevent it, that it just didn't happen. And yeah. that occurrence never like, like shocked people that didn't happen. It was never known to the real world right. that it was not going to happen because they saved it. Yeah, like... You know, if someone's about to shoot someone and then the bullet is a dud, like you want to be like, "Oh, thanks, guy that accidentally messed up and made that bullet a dud." Like it's not his fault. You don't like thank him for it. So they didn't do anything that really was like prevalent, but they they did important stuff. That they, led to that led like, yeah. It really like it was a domino effect. You know, you prevent one thing, you prevent a lot of things. So. Um, yeah, basically, thank you, Nathan Hale. Actually, no. Nathan Hale was a bad spy. Thank you, James yeah. Armistead yeah. Lafayette and other people that did some cool stuff. Um, but yeah, 
next quarter. I'm not sure what ages we're going to cover, but we'll probably be back to talk about some more intelligent stuff at the end of next quarter. You know, Friday is in two days. It's 9.43 on Wednesday night. I've got to work. Go eat some pizza. So, we will see you next time see in Area 52. Later.